Welcome back to another edition of Zero Block 30. Today we're going to be talking about a fellow that plays bagpipes and he did it in Normandy. I read this story earlier last week and I was blown away. And we talked a little bit about stories we didn't know last week, like the gentleman who was in 20, he was in the jungle for 29 years. We talked about some things that happened in Desert Storm. Now we're going to talk about another story that I haven't heard of because I'm tired of talking about military news because it's depressing. Okay. Like it's it's just depressing. So I need I need a couple weeks break. A little sorbet. Yeah. A little sorbet. <laughs> but I would also like to add, Katie, context here. There's lots of wonderful things happening in the military with wonderful no. people doing great jobs. No. And we love all it's of you. It's all bad. I no, mean, no, I'm just kidding. Things. It's not all bad. But we've been doing this for eight years, and I think that I just need a little bit of a break from yeah, the minutia. Yeah. So we're gonna keep it interesting. And I thought last week was great, so we're gonna keep going with that and today's show is going to be presented by our friends at vfw we've told you a lot about the things that the vfw are doing uh one of those things came up this week there was some educational benefits that my daughter applies for that she gets every year when she goes to school she had some issues getting it going again after a new semester just started because they do tri semesters i guess mm -hmm. um trimesters not tri semesters but trimesters yeah. so they do that she had some issues she called up the vfw they helped her out they showed her the form that she needed i probably could have helped her out but i didn't answer my phone so she went to the <laughs> vfw and figured it out herself good for her they help in so many different ways not just with the loan sharks which they're obviously doing and you can yeah, check the claim out it. sharks they're up to no good yeah claim sharks not loan sharks uh, <laughs> they use it as a loan shark yes, essentially yeah. they are loan sharks yes, in, right. a, in a big way because they offer all kinds of upfront money mm -hmm. dude i swear to god every three or four and it it's really been since we've been tagging the vfw even more so have you guys seen so many of the the scam like the shark companies in your instagram you're getting like ads you're, for them now yeah. it's all over the place yeah mm -hmm. an old algorithm kicked in i have that i get all i don't know how they got my email i get an email from one all the time i i bet if i pulled it up i got five this week easy maybe because i have a va loan and i'm a va like guy maybe that's the reason why either way the vfw is out here trying to make sure that nobody gets screwed over and loses a big portion get because if you're struggling financially and you get offered let's say they figure that you're going to go up to 100 and then 100 percent disability and they say we're going to give you eight thousand dollars up front you owe us 20 percent, and then 20 percent what you get if you're underwater and you're vulnerable and you're desperate yeah right. i mean yeah if you're i mean think about the unhoused population that happens in the veteran community mm -hmm. if you haven't got your benefits yet and you're getting ready to kick get kicked out on your keister you'll take basically whatever they'll offer you like well, yeah, at that because point th that's better than zero right because let's just use 100 percent as the argument here that's three to four thousand dollars depending on, on if you're married you have dependents it's a significant amount of money i'm not mm -hmm. going to shake a stick at that and it's tax-free mm -hmm. so if you're getting zero dollars present day and you get awarded that 100% disability and they say, we're just going to take 10, 20% in your head. A lot of people probably think, well, ah, that's not too bad. I'm still getting more than I was. So this is okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the scam. And the point is with VFW, you don't, you get a hundred percent of it. They will help you just like these other scammers will, but you get a hundred percent of it as you deserve. Yep. So, so if you want to check it out and get some help for the VFW, if you have claims <laughs> to file, whether it's the PAC Act or whatever you got, they're going to help you out by go just go to vfw.org slash join or vfw.org slash barstool or don't feed the sharks.org or all places that you can go to learn about your benefits and get the help for the benefits that you absolutely earn and deserve all right today i was going to just start off cons made a great point like i think that there's something to be said about being a parent we just like to sing there's yeah. a lot of singing Yes, there is a lot of singing involved. I've been singing an Irish song lately, I think, because of St. Patrick's oh, what is Day. It? The Rattlin Bog. Oh, oh let's do it. And on that chick, there was a flea. I think I did this the other week yeah, too. Yeah, keep Rare it going. Flea, Kate. a rattling flea, flea on the chicken, the chicken, the egg, and the egg, and the branch, the branch, and the limb, and the limb, and the tree, and the tree, and the hole, and the hole, and the bog, and the bog, and the hole, and the and the valley. Oh, 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 the rattling bog. I think I did this. Yeah, I, I'm. Repeating. I don't know that part. The bog going. down in the valley. Oh, yeah, row, yeah, row, yeah, the rattling yeah, bog. Yeah, the bog yeah, down in the yeah, valley. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. and normally by that point you are hammered. Drunk. Oh, you yeah, are. Yeah, the whole and your cousin Dave says something on the party bus on the way back from the wedding, and then your uncle Chris gets pissed off, and everybody's yelling the rattling bog. 
dogs going in the That's background, right. and, and cousin Billy right. hit, hit, lights up a cig in the back, Billy's and Aunt Kathy's right like, "Who lit up a cig in the back of this bus after this wedding?" It's uh, it's a really family. It's a family treat in our home. So I sing it to my son. <laughs> that being said, do you guys make up your own? Oh yeah, I make up. I have. Oh yeah. Do you have a go to that you sing to your kid? I have a song for when we ride in an elevator. Mm -hmm. I have a song for when we get in the car. I have a song for when we change the diapers. What's the elevator song? Elevator dance. Oh. And we stomp, 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 stomp. Ba, elevator ba, 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 ba. dance. Oh. And we do the mm -hmm. elevator. Hit the buttons now. Mm -hmm. Elevator dance. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Just cash losing shit and he's down. not the one that hits the the button so i have him stomping i keep him busy with stomping uh, while i hit the button so he he's on it, percussion chaps. so he doesn't yes. elf like elevator it all the yep. way down oh yeah and do it that way <laughs> what Absolutely. about what about you cons you have one dude i tell you it just goes in ebbs and flows for me I, I just make up such weird stuff all the time that it's not consistent to where i can remember it but right now we are been very big just because I saw it on Miss Rachel, so it got stuck in my head. The mm. ants marching. So the ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. Yeah. And as an hurrah. army guy, it's natural. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's It just speaks to me. Yeah. And then, you should do the so, airborne song. <laughs> <laughs> I just start doing freaking running cadences with her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that'll probably happen here pretty soon. I have that's some, right. not just for my kids, but for my puppies. I have ah. one. D baby Dale's is, him's a tiny baby. Woo hoo. <laughs> him's a tiny baby boy. So I, I like to think like even Chesty Puller had a song for his dog, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. like even the toughest of tough. Yeah. And then Cardi's is from a little makeshift of Sweeney Todd. Okay. Mm. That's my posy, cotty little rosy. Aww. That's my little posy. Look at you. <laughs> so, yeah. I love it. Anyways, yeah, let's talk anyway, about uh, war. Let's get into what? a little bit of war goofing. War goofing. Can I, I was talking to you. Can we do one happy little military story before we? Sure. I don't want to throw yeah. off the whole show. Yeah. But I was talking to chaps about the splatal. Oh, yeah. Before the show time. I was very inspired by someone yesterday. It's, you like things that are made of clay. I like things that are spladle, spladle, spladle. First off, <laughs> let me get to the military part of it. Okay. It's not just March Madness for basketball. True. NCAA wrestling championships were this past mm, weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in two decades, all three military service academies had wrestlers earn collegiate all American honors. Three wrestlers, one from the Navy, Air Force, in the U.S. military, Air Force. What's the other one? Army. Just Army. Oh, Academy. yeah. You guys do. Yeah. Oh, no. The Coast Guard. So anyway, basically, military was crushing it in the wrestling department this year. But I wanted to talk about. Did you guys see the clip before I talked about it? Mm -mm. I don't know what clip you're referring I know, to. I know which clip you're talking about. Yes, I did see it. Mega viral because everybody was watching basketball. And it's rare. KB here is our re resident wrestling expert. He wrestled mm -hmm. in college. And he even said, like, it's rare that big time, not WWE, but regular ass wrestling, like hits the rest of us yeah. out and whatever. There was a move that an Ohio State guy put on a Nebraska wrestler that went mega, mega viral. I couldn't turn around without seeing this move. Japs, what do you think of that? Yes, yeah, it looks like he's going to do that uh, butthole sunning. Perennium sunning. <laughs> yeah, Basically, he... this guy put this other, say you're on your back, say I was on my back. And someone bent both of my legs. My legs are behind my head and my butthole. You can see this kid's like through the wrestling uniform. Like you can see his butthole. Yeah. Normally KB said the move lasts for like two seconds and then it's done. This guy, even though he was in horrible pain, refused to let his back go flat on the mat. So the move would be over. He like refused to let this guy win, even though he was in the most embarrassing position ever. So this Nebraska guy, had his butthole on ESPN. Mm. The cameras never panned away for over a minute. Do you know how long a minute is when you're a long butthole? Time. Yeah. For over, and you can see him as he's trapped. He's kind of looking around. He's looking at his coaches. He's like picking his head up, looking at the camera. And he's like, oh my God, my whole perennium. <laughs> yeah. Because right away, anybody who runs a social media account for the NCAA for ESPN is like, oh, this is going viral. Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports. <laughs> yeah. It got posted. 20 million different times. And this was in the quarterfinals. He gets splatled for over a minute. He loses the match. He goes back to his hotel room. He makes these in the finals. And he had, we had him on the yak yesterday. He called in. 
he says he goes back to his hotel room and he knows that his butthole has just been shown on national TV for over a minute in the most embarrassing way possible. Mm -hmm. He's like, I had deleted my social media before we even got to this tournament just to keep my head clear. He couldn't help it. He downloads Instagram again oh, before no. his final matches. Oh, He's no. like, I just want to see are people talking about this? And there is this. He there can't. is he his can't. butthole everywhere. No, you can't. Now his algorithm is going to be his own butthole. Well, here's the inspiration. <laughs> this is what he said when he called in. I went back to the hotel room, knew I had to wrestle in the blood round, and I had Instagram deleted. And I was like, should I download it again to see what's going on? And I did. And it was everywhere. But it was good. I wrestled the rest of the tournament going, I can't let that be the last thing. I got to in spite of the world. I, I got to take third right now. I love it. That would have crumpled me mentally. Oh, like, yeah. It would have. And instead. Well, so college wrestlers. And this is completely anecdotal because I'm just using the college wrestlers that I know, not just the ones that went to my school, but any school. Wrestling is one of the hardest, the three hardest sports to do at the collegiate level. And this isn't me. This is like studies done. The three hardest sports to do at the uh, collegiate level, wrestling, swimming, football. College wrestlers have a discipline oh, that most crazy. people don't mm -hmm. possess mm -hmm. and a mental fortitude. The amount of success and millionaires I know who were college wrestlers and will attribute their success to wrestling is significant. So that doesn't surprise me that he turned that whole thing around in a way to motivate himself. Yeah, yeah that's a big thing to do, though, whenever your butthole's out. Like, Google uh, the picture to see what we're talking about, and you'll be like, oh, my God. It shouldn't be called a splatel. It should be called a splatchcock. Like, it it looks was, like a splatchcock chicken. It does look like a splatchcock turkey or chicken. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's exactly. And he said, too, he was like, I think about all the other like younger people who are getting into wrestling who get put in an embarrassing move and they feel dumb. And he's like, if I gave up, I don't want people who, who also get splatled. Splatled Awareness Month. <laughs> you got to keep going. You get splatled. You got to keep going. But I just picture, say you're in the, the McMatt pit wrestling on the thing and you get splatled. Everybody's coming up to you going, doink. Oh, hey there, splatled. Come here. Yeah. Like for the rest of your you career. You will never live the it The rest down. of your career, you're getting splatled out. Uh, but Maybe I thought I, it was super I just cool. don't know, but I think that would be harder to see out in the wild in the McMatt pits just because I think you have to be... To even get put into that position, I think you have to be ridiculously flexible. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that you can get to that spot when you just are there and you luck into that spot. You're like, oh, well, his legs are this way. I think I'm just going to pull. Okay, like there's, maybe. There's certain spots. I think you're like I didn't, hamstrings or something or groins. Like happening. I've done, I've choked people out with a darst choke and I found out that it's called a darst choke after I was done. Like you, 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 didn't you just know. grab necks and arms and you just try to choke somebody and That's, then it ends up being a move sometimes. KB said it's super rare. He said it's like cicadas. It only pops yeah. up once like yeah. every 10 years, but when it does, it goes by. You see it everywhere. You yeah. can't get it. But I just, uh, I loved this guy. And by the end of the call, he called in yesterday. He said it was like uh, Talladega Nights when Ricky Bobby yeah. flips upside down. He's like, uh-oh, I'm upside down right now. <laughs> yeah. He had such a good sense of humor. I'm upside down. And by the end of the call, he was working out an NIL deal with Barstool. Nice. We're coming up with a t-shirt, a Splatel Awareness t-shirt for the act that he's going to get the money from. <laughs> That's so and great. And we're all going to go see him wrestle when he comes to Chicago in the summer. And But to me, sorry, I'm rambling, but like, it's just such a great example of when bad things happen or embarrassing things happen if you own it and you step up to it and you're just like yep i'm human something goofy happened whatever i don't know i just fucking loved this guy brock hardy is his name is i great still feel like too. that's number oh, yeah. two of most embarrassing wrestling moments i've seen oh no what's number one have you guys seen the clip of there's a dude that they're wrestling they're in like their singlets and you can see a lot of times oh, when those no. guys their dicks are out in the open like you know you're wearing such loose stuff it's like gray sweatpants you can see the whole outline. right yeah. and one of the guys his dick was up and the other dude was trying to move in position and when his head was on his waist he like moves his chin <laughs> and his you could see his dick like go <laughs> along with the guy's chin yeah. and you could see it clear as day his dick moves like three inches <laughs> and then i i mean splash cock or dick mover Either way, not great. Shout out to wrestlers. Yeah. Um, anyway, the moral of the story is congrats to those military wrestlers. Yeah, congrats to all you those. You guys are awesome. Good tie-in, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. yeah just, <laughs> you know. uh, all right, let's move on. We're going to talk about the Mad Piper. Okay, what's going on with the old Mad Piper? Well, 
Oh, the old Mad Piper Aye. went to town. He was on, okay, that's the other song I sing. From. <laughs> Bill Millen was the Mad Piper who played Allied commandos ashore under heavy German fire at Sword Beach in Normandy on D-Day on the extreme eastern flank of Operation Overlord. Before we really hop in, we need to set the tone a little bit and give historical context. Mm. Hop in my time machine again. Yeah. The Macarena was the hit at the time. No. <laughs> That's exactly right. Sword Beach was one of the five landing zones on Norm Normandy's coast during the D-Day invasion of World War II. June 6, 1944. British troops. Sword Beach was primarily assigned to British forces. Troops from the 3rd Infantry Division and the 27th Armor Brigade land on Sword Beach. Prior to the landings, Allied Navy vessels were, this is a comment that we did it to mm -hmm. Iwo Jima before we, and, and yep. all the, you bomb the shit out of it before you go in. So the British military is bombing the ever-loving fuck out of the German coastal defenses to weaken their positions and clear way for the amphibious assault. At the same time, airborne operations are going. Sixth Airborne Division is securing key objectives inland to support the beach assault. They're capturing bridges. They're disrupting German counterattacks. And on the German side, the German 716th Infantry with artillery, machine guns, and obstacles like mines and beach obstacles, they're all set up. The assault on Sword Beach began early in the morning hours, and British infantry and armored units came ashore under heavy fire from German positions. And we've all seen the images. Like, an assault is hard enough. Doing it in the water with all your gear on, coming through the waves, being shot at, Every single direction. Watching like, people drop every other foot. There were people yeah, drowning. There and were then people, yeah. You get to the beach and it's sand. I mean, anybody who's ever run on sand, now just add all of that wet gear sand. you're wearing. You're wet and you're being shot at. Yeah. And so they establish the beachhead, though. They get their British troops begin advancing inland and they're encountering stiff resistance from German defenders. But progress was slow and steady. They're making their way into the foothold in Normandy. They link up with Allied forces and British forces from Sword Beach and Canadian forces from Juno Beach and American forces from Omaha Beach. They're creating one big Allied front across Normandy. So that brings to, us old Bill. That brings us old Bill. He was the only Piper to lead Allied troops into battle that day. Now Pipers are Navy SEALs. Oh, yeah. Hitters, yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, into battle that day following a war office ban that said Pipers would attract sniper fire. But his commander, yeah, no shit. Yeah, right. Yeah. But his commander, Brigadier Lord Lavat, Simon Fraser, hereditary chief of the clan Fraser, a longtime stoolie, was a law unto himself. Ah, oh, but that's the English war office. Millen Lovett told him, I'm making this guy Irish. You and I are both Scottish, so that doesn't apply. No, oh, it's Scottish. Close, it's close yeah, enough okay. accent. Yeah. Millen recalled, Lord Lovett said this was going to be the greatest invasion in the history of warfare, and he wanted the bagpipes leading it. On the landing craft sailing out of the mouth of the river Hamble, in South England, he said I was to play and he would worry about the consequences later. I just, what do you, like this Lord dude, how aristocratic do you have to be to think, I need a bagpiper? Yeah. Like, it, you, Scottish. He's you not... read too much fucking Shakespeare. Like, that, we just don't, you don't need that. Why would you I do mean... that? Ah, bagpipes do kind of make everything better. Oh, no, don't I, get me wrong. I'm not poo-pooing bad pipes. Oh, I'm yeah. just saying, if you're on Normandy, maybe a flute? Like, pick up something that you could carry a little easier? Well, I'll say this, too. I Listen, I'm Irish. I love a good bagpipe. A mm -hmm. couple beers in me, and I walk out front, and there's a bagpiper outside the bar. I'm like, what a treat. This is fun. For about five minutes. Yeah. About five minutes. You're yeah. playing it inside the bar two minutes at best. You're playing it when I'm getting shot at by a machine gun on a beach. Maybe a minute I could deal with. It. Also, it's a little indoors, stressful. right, Kate? Like at the That's Marine Corps tough. ball, occasionally they would have them come in and do the hymn. That's a loud little it's bag like, to be. Can we just play it on the radio? Like, yeah, it's, it's a little... so loud in here. And again, Irish, you know. Yeah. But it's a, a bit stressful of a sound. Anyway, uh, the Mad Piper label came from both Millen's own comrades and the German defenders of Sword Beach at Colville sur Mer, who said the capture, who said after capture that the only reason they did not shoot him is that they thought he must have gone off his head. Fair. That's I mean, fair. That's yeah. fair. Although one man was shot dead alongside him on his landing craft and he saw many of his comrades floating face down in the surf, he said the sound of his pipes drowned some of the gunfire and mortar fire. 
I didn't really notice I was being shot at myself, he said. The water was freezing. Next thing I remember is my kilt floating in the water like a ballerina. He launched into one of Lovett's favorites. How does something favorites. float like a ballerina? What does that mean? Like oh, when, the skirt, when you spin and then the yeah. skirt kind of comes out. Oh. It was floating, floating around him. Oh. He launched into one of Lovett's favorites, Highland Laddie, as he waded ashore. <laughs> love it. Firing it's like his... the Lord guy's like, oh, I love this song. I love yeah. it. Yeah, oh, Highland Laddie. <laughs> Meanwhile, love it. He, he brought his own non-service issue Winchester rifle and a walking stick and gave him a That's thumbs up. That's even crazier. I fucking love with this walking guy. Stick. This is Scottish people. My neighbors were Scottish and every summer their whole Scottish family, the grandparents, the grandkids, like they all came over for the summer. Shout out Christopher Southwell. I had the biggest crush on him ever. He was a- Who? Christopher Southwell. He was uh, this wait. little boy. He was my age and he was Scottish. I can't believe you dropped a full have, Christian name. Sorry, did they have more brothers and sisters than your parents? No, they did not. Oh, okay. uh, right. 13, by the way. My dad had right. ever mentioned that. I've heard. But the, the grandparents were the loveliest people ever. I could not understand a word they ever said to me. <laughs> I would always Scottish respond, is tough. It was, I could understand Arabic and Spanish and Chinese better than I could understand the Scottish brogue. But anyway, Highland Laddie's playing. Love it's got his walking stick and his Winchester rifle. What and is, he's like, I fuck mean, yeah. Because you think about that scene. I could see that being a scene in like the war of 1812. I could see it being a scene in like the revolutionary war, probably not civil war time period, but 1812 old school when people are wearing like red coats and service alphas basically to war. I could see that then we're talking world war two where there's tanks and shit going by. But I, I will say too, I I've just suddenly changed my tune on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> war is surreal. There's like, Afghanistan and what I experienced can't compare even a, a fraction of a fraction of a fraction to this, but there is something surreal about it. you're up in an outpost and there's gunfire all around you and the machine gunner sitting next to you is, is playing like fucking machine gun Kelly or something like that. Well, what was an artist that was like big at the time? Oh, system of a down and yeah, a perfect circle. Or, Creed? Yeah. They're playing like, yeah. Creed yeah. was totally what all the, God, that would be amazing. We have Scott doon, staff doon, like doon, 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 flying doon. in, like he was doing the Thanksgiving shit again, but instead he's at Normandy. But With arms wide open. There were moments that were, and like I had a Cosmo magazine and there's nothing I can do. And there's gunfire. It's like these surreal moments where just playing music from home or whatever makes it. Well, I've said a million times when I was going down, like looking for IDs, I would have my Zoom in and I would be listening to Frank Sinatra to chill me out. It gives you like a weird sense of normalcy mm -hmm. during a time that is very not normal. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so I think that's where I stand on this thing. I mean, back in 1812 chaps, the flutes were used to kind of direct advances in different parts and different units. Whereas with this, I think it was strictly for morale and, and to keep you moving forward in the face of just a nightmarish, situation but you hear the bagpipes and maybe that just gives you just that enough oomph to, yep. to keep moving forward no and i totally understand i'm saying flute just for like you no, can put know, it in a little saying, side holster yeah. so you yeah, don't have it yeah. To, to navigate, yeah yeah but i think if you want to do that to get people's attention maybe get willy wonka's little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like go this way well too as we talked about the bagpipes are so loud it was drowning out the sounds of the the guys getting fired at and which also had to be a little bit comforting probably drowning out the shouts of corman too it possibly too. Oh, well yeah that could be bad and mm -hmm. drawing sniper fire but anyway on the beach in the heart of battle love it asked him would you mind giving us another tune millen how about the road to the isles and millen half jokingly re jokingly replied now would you want me to walk up and down sir I Millen, that would be nice. I walk up and down. <laughs> so the Piper. I love Lord Love it. The, love him. At this point, the Piper, Mad Millen is like, fuck it. Off I go. And the Piper starts walking back and forth down Sword Beach three times amid thick smoke, dead and wounded comrades yelling for medics and mortars going off all around him. When they heard the pipes, some of the lads started cheering, but one wasn't very pleased, and he called me the Mad Bastard. <laughs> but we usually referred to Lovett as the Mad Bastard, but it was the first time I had heard it referred to me. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there was a mix of people very annoyed at it and also very fuck yeah at it. And when you see somebody leading the who's just casually walking amidst it, I would find that incredibly comforting in the weirdest way. I would also find yeah. it terrifying. Like, if you're on the enemy... And you see somebody coming up with a bagpipe and like, we don't care about this. We're yep. going to war and this is just what we're going to do right now. I feel like that's intimidating. As yes, well. I think so. 
Uh, Millen, who Lovett had appointed his personal piper during commando <laughs> training at Archenary. See, chaps, if you had been an officer, you could have had your own flute flautist. Oh, yeah. I would you love could that. have. Yeah. If you had... I, uh, technically, I would have preferred the oboe. I would take a fiddle, I think. Yeah. If I could have a personal. A personal fiddle would be great. Just plays nothing but the devil went down to Georgia. Yeah, that would oh, be. I love that song. <laughs> That'd be kind of sick yeah, during the heat of battle. Yeah. Um, but Mad Millen, he was the only man during the landing who wore a kilt. It was the same Cameron tar Tartan kilt his dad had worn in Flanders during the Great War. That would pump me the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And he was only armed with his pipes and the Skandu Dirk sheath head inside his right sock. So he was ready to stab the shit out of people if he yeah. needed to. His exploits on that day were immortalized in the star-studded 1962 Hollywood blockbuster The Longest Day, which showed his character ignoring sniper fire to lead Lovett and the commandos over the Benoville Bridge later named Pegasus Bridge. It seemed Something like an awfully long bridge. That's primal, man. Yeah. And I respect the heck out of that. Just mm -hmm. to see that person in battle in a kilt. Mm-hmm. Yep. That, yeah, and you know, me up. you yep. know, he wasn't wearing anything under it when that, that oh. ocean water hit the tip. Oh, yeah. Whoop! Yeah. And he kept going. But it's probably good to go in the cold water there because you have shrinkage and you don't want a, a long dangler when there's sniper fire coming out. That's a great it's point. Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, Lovett's first SSB, including free French Green Break commandos, had landed and so blah, 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 blah. Hold on. He did a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, he did a bunch That's of other stuff. That's basically other the story of the, yeah. of the Mad Piper. I just thought it was incredibly interesting how different the wars are. Like how yeah. the change in 75 years. Can you imagine if you're going through house to house in Fallujah and you just have some dude <laughs> on the back backpiper? Like you're trying to have sound no. discipline, you're have light discipline, and then you come out. I think that it would be even scarier though. Like uh, putting yourself in that position in Baghdad, Fallujah, Marja, wherever you were at nighttime. Because yeah. think about it like the uh, the uh, the inverse. If you were out at nighttime and the call for prayers came out you were like oh shit because there's yeah. a lot of times right after that is whenever you would get attacked yep so i think it would be the inverse of that like if you're going out on a night raid and you're in the city and you're like a like one of those spots like Ram ramadi where a bunch of al-qaeda and isis members used to hide out all the time and you hear bagpipes start coming oh you gotta be chills. like oh, yeah our way to, to fight back against their call to prayer i love that yeah. i think that's like hey you know pucker up that butthole because we're coming oh yeah. i'm looking at a picture of it and it's a picture taken of him it's from the boat looking over but from behind looking towards the beach of normandy and there's people in the water there's the the what do they call them? The landing vehicles or whatever everywhere. Yeah, and amphibious assault. Vehicles. And he's holding, yeah. you see the bagpipe there, and he's just facing straight ahead, fucking play. Yeah, this guy's badass. And he lived until 2003. Yeah. Which that's is, great. uh, yeah, the things that he went on to do afterwards are pretty sweet too. I, I think that's what I find fascinating about World War II veterans as well. None of them came back and started like a coffee company or like a t shirt yeah, right? company. <laughs> they just came back and became like school teachers, arborists. <laughs> just yeah. do, but I think that that also, whenever you come back from that battle, I would imagine that you want nothing to do with war. Like you the, want normalcy. Yeah, the yeah, farthest the you could get from more environment. Yeah. yeah. Do I want to make yeah, yeah. it my whole personality? Uh, Normandy wasn't that fun. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna uh, just be a businessman. That's fine with me. Well, not yet. Not yeah. even a businessman. Like I, I just think to the last episode of Band of Brothers when he goes through and what everybody did, there was like. One guy was a handyman. One guy yeah. had a, a mail route. One guy drove a cab. Like these are, they're, and those are all, you know, respectable professions, but they're not like, to Chaps' point, coming back and becoming like titans of industry or like these massively, you know, wealthy entrepreneurs. Some of them certainly did have success in that regard, but it wasn't the, the norm. Yeah. <laughs> true. That's true. All right. Let's move on to some save rounds and alibis. Cons. Will you tell us a little bit about BetterHelp before we do that? Oh, oh yes, of course. BetterHelp. Well, as we know, Zero Black 30 is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, Learning how would you the use it? True. I and mean, that's one way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a, a way to, to relax. Also, I will uh, say, 23-year-old Kate. You, you're, you walk in and you're like, yeah, I played the bagpipes in Normandy. Yeah. Yeah. Which maybe yeah. I should talk to BetterHelp about. Yeah, probably so. Maybe I could just enjoy the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of bagpipes, best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedules to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. I myself have benefited from therapy. Chaps has benefited from therapy. Kate has benefited from therapy. We are speaking from experience here. So if you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do, fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And good news, you switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Because not every therapist is meant to be for every individual. You got to find the right fit for you. I'm sure uh, we've all changed therapists because somebody's a little bit of a better fit. And there's nothing wrong with that. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash zero today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash zero. All right. So bad news. I am going to talk about a little something sad. Do you guys see that video of the bridge collapsing? Yes. Yes. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. Yeah. Terrible. Horrible, horrible. Um, I mean, I saw I, that the ship knew something was wrong with their ship and they were able to issue a mayday call, which then allowed the sh- uh, bridge to shut down traffic. So there were no cars on the bridge when it collapsed, if I'm correct. Well, no, there was a couple there. So far, they have at least seven deaths that oh, had okay. oh, occurred sorry. from it. And there was, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Well, that, here's the what's, video. Shocking. Yeah. Early Tuesday, it was like one in the morning and the something with the propulsion of the ship, this major cargo ship with like the 10,000 Connex boxes on it. And it couldn't steer it like lost steering. And it hit, you can see it hit the main support. And while it's doing that, you could see in and out on the video where the, you could tell that they lost power, like that they were losing power to the ship right before it ran into the bridge happened three separate times where all the lights go out, all the lights come back on out on when you're on that crew, it's gotta be, terrifying yeah yeah and just terrible and who was on the bridge was there was a a maintenance crew because a lot of these bridges and stuff because of traffic they do it in the middle of the night and so there was a big construction crew doing concrete work on the bridge and so you can see in the video and as soon as the ship hits the main support beam it was like instant the whole bridge went down it wasn't like a slow creek they had time to run the bridge got hit and it all went down it was almost like like an implosion yeah like an implosion um Two workers rescued from the water. There are six people still unaccounted for, and they were all part of that construction crew that was filling potholes on the bridge at the time. And you could see their vehicles blinking, and then all of a sudden you could see as the vehicles are on the bridge and it goes down. Um, the Coast Guard got there as quick as they could among other rescue vehicles. But, yeah, just a crazy. I mean, that was like a major, major bridge. Oh, yeah. It was it's huge. huge. Like, I don't – and that's not one that you rebuild quickly. Like, yeah. That's... No. And also, I just don't think – 2024 you expect to see a bridge just collapse no like i granted those cargo ships i can't even imagine the weight of one of those like hitting it direct with the force of the water yeah the the tide was going the other way so the tide's helping Mm -hmm. push that forward and then when it hits the tide's still coming against an object that that's big which really keeps it going it's just a nightmare situation and how many people are fucking terrified of bridge travel anyways? I have That's a cousin whose husband, they, when they come to the Jersey shore every year, they have to go from where they're coming from a bunch of major bridges. And there's a company where before, when he would do it himself, they meet you at the start at the first like entrance to the highway for the bridge and they drive you over. And then there's a car falling. So then they, once you're over the bridge, they get out and get in their buddy's car and leave. But like, there's a service for people who cannot drive over bridges who like can't bring themselves to do it. And that's how bad it was. So I imagine, but obviously the worst thing is this happening and you're right, by the way, I nor the old me would have referred to those people as pussies, Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah. I'm not going to do it. I won't say yeah, it. I'll keep it to now. myself. Yeah. But you're right. A May day was issued and they did shut down. So there could, it could have been so much worse, but what I'm wondering right. is how much time was there? Cause it takes time to shut down a highway to keep people off the bridge. Why were those construction workers? Not Why, getting off. Themselves. How did they not get off as quickly? Like, Maybe they weren't alerted aware somehow. Or, I yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm sure that all come sad. out. But just, ter- just absolutely terrible. Yeah, crazy. All so. right, let's move on to some actual save yeah. rounds and alibi. Sorry about that, but I thought we needed to talk about it because that's a big yeah, event of what's going on. Cons, we'll start with you, my friend. 
Oh, we got today's old school cons. I got a bunch. All right. Okay. Number one. Ooh. Number one. All right. I want to talk through something that happened in your guys' office this week. Okay. Chaps, you were somewhat vindicated. but No, all the way vindicated. Too? All the way vindicated. Well, here was my issue. Uh, and Katie, contacts, you want to tell us what happened really quickly? Yes, I will. Let's, let's rewind to, was it Thursday? Yes, it was. Thursday, yeah. I had my car in the shop about maybe not a full mile from here, but like a bit of a walk. And I'm struggle busting lately physically. And I go to walk to get the car and I see Chaps in his car. I'm like, Chaps, do you mind giving me a ride? Which she's skating by this a lot. The fact that she was going to walk a mile up and down curbs where if she would got hit by a bicyclist, her arms and legs and back would shatter completely. <laughs> she was like, would you mind giving me a ride? I'm like, no, Kate. And why didn't you ask me inside? Like, <laughs> Great point. Great point. I don't want to be a hassle. I was anyway. like 20 feet away. I'd rather die than be a burden. Right. But anyway, <laughs> I, it's the Irish way. Speaking it, is, of the yeah, Irish, it, is, it is. It is. I guess it I'll is. just die. But anyway, I hop in your car. But before I do, you're like, hold on. Let me move this massive cardboard box mm -hmm. of various, like, looks like homemade soup containers. Like, yeah. it looked like a, a ton of them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, where did you get all this? It food was like, from? so for you to know what kind of container we're talking about, if you've ever seen like deli potato salad, yeah, yeah that's what it comes in. And there was a bunch of them and they looked very nice. I was like, oh, wow, where'd you get all this? And you were pumped to tell I me was about pumped. it yeah it was four big soups you were like kate we get so much because the office gets big lunches and stuff like that and you're like any leftover food at the end of the week they have a fridge now we could take food home and like especially with young kids and stuff i'm like oh my god i became pumped i was like that's fucking sick so you get to bring all this food home this weekend blah 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 and i was pumped for you it's supposed and you to be 20 something degrees that night a nice potato soup hit wonderful you were like yeah there was like 15 different kinds of soup in this fridge so i took them i was like that's sick fast forward to yesterday PFT comes up to me and he's like, hey, Kate, do you like soup? And I was like, I love soup. I love it. And he was like, well, you're on the suspect list. And I was like, suspect list? <laughs> he's like, somebody took, I had this huge thing of soups to last me like the next two weeks in the fridge and somebody took them all. And right away, I was like, oh. right away, I pictured that cardboard box in your car. And now I, on the refrigerator, what does the science say on the refrigerator? Because this is important it before says, I make my point. It says at the end of the week, everything that's in there is free. But that's not what it says, cons. Like, I know what you're going to try to say here. That's not at that fridge at any time you could take this stuff. On Fridays, everything gets thrown out. So if it's not gone by Friday, everything is removed and tossed. Right. Yeah. That's the now, rule of the fridge. My qualm or what mm -hmm. I thought was a little iffy. Similar to the episode we had years ago where people were taking two Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Yeah. He took too much soup. You took too much, man. It's it, four. It's, like, it's four. Out, there was 15 or 16 that was in there. Four. And you took like 12. I no, heard. I took four. In my I mind, it was a box full of soup. Four, I, yeah. I have four <laughs> people in my family, cons. Why would I only bring dinner home for one or two of my mm. people and then be like, everybody else go chew on grass outside? It's mm. and it's free mm. leftovers. Why? Why in the world? Even if I took everything in that fridge, everything in that fridge is up for grabs because well, it's because old. you didn't give you didn't it's give anybody else times. a chance. It's you leftovers. Anyone else, anybody else, else could have gone there at any time at the end of the day. And well, they couldn't because you you, you rated it. The difference they could. between the difference between the Chick Fil A example, which I would completely give you, that would be if soup was delivered. And before mm. anybody else got it, I went and got arms full of soup. If so that was if the I, case, kick, what I'm a piece else, of shit. What if someone <laughs> else, what, you know, I know you have four kids or excuse me, two kids and, and, and a wife. What if your colleagues all wanted to take home soup that day? But no, but chaps has to feed his family first. Well, here's the most. And they should have been in there earlier. What do you mean? Before I go to the free fridge, I'm supposed to send an email. I'm going to take some home. But if anybody else wants it over me, by all means, no one's I doing that. Know. That's I outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. Four soups completely vindicated. And it's PFT's fault. If you put stuff in oh, any, that's his fault any in that communal fridge, fridge you, you got to put this is PFT's. Nobody would have touched it. He's got the status in the company that nobody well, would have touched. No, 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 no. You shouldn't even, it shouldn't matter who you are. In the but company. even you more so, something. even more so. If it's a, like, there's a, a big difference between taking spiders potato soup and taking port noise. 
like potato <laughs> well, yeah. soup. All right, like, that's fair. Yeah. I guess yeah. all I'm saying is I I would probably feel a little uncomfortable if I went a little too crazy in the in the free soup fridge. Oh, I don't feel bad at all. And in fact, if those tomato soups are in there right now, I'm going to go get them and dump them in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> PFD was right. very very bummed that he was left with the crappy soups. He's like, so, "Oh, I got And Dan, you left your friend, you left your friend upset. And then granted, he shouldn't have used that fridge because of the 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 uh the rules of that fridge, but nevertheless, you left your friend without soup. I didn't leave him without soup. He left himself without soup by All not right. being responsible. He should have done his All gear right. checks. He should have done supplies. He should have labeled everything. I didn't see a single label on there. So gear adrift is a gift. I mean, there's so many different things that apply military wise. You got to be accountable for all your things. And if you're not, yeah. somebody else with a bald head and a big beard is going to come in and eat your potato soup. Maybe some and new protocol needs to be put in place for the fridge. I, yeah, if it was in a different fridge, I'm not taking it. There's all kinds of shit that's in different fridges, sandwiches. If I don't take any of If gets left, it's not a theft. That's exactly right, Kate. <laughs> yes. All, all right. right. Anything um, else, Cons? Yes. Um, uh, there was a Reddit post for Army. Why do Army officers love to run so much? When our uh, officers are in charge of PT, do they love to run and normally run long distances? And I said, it's by and large, I'm making a generality, and I think this is across all branches, but specifically the Army and the Marines. We can run further, faster, and longer than the NCOs and the soldiers and the Marines. So it's just a, a quiet little reminder that, eh, we can do this better. I, than I you. totally agree with you. I think yeah. all across the board, it. on average, officers are far better shape because they have to yeah. be. Like yeah. they, they absolutely have to be. And one, if you get through OCS, Marine OCS is no joke. It's yeah. miles harder than recruit training. Did miles. you all know that in FA school for officers, so the standard is one number for the Army, and your guys' standard, Marine officers, is you have to have a 90% grade or better. Army's yeah. like, I think, like, ours, we have to like have like a 70 or 75% or better. You guys have to have 90% or better on all your tests. And the physical standards for the Marine officers is so high and above any other branch. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, our OCS is the TBS is pretty close to Ranger shit. Like it's yeah. pretty close to the same qualifications that you have. So I have no qualms about that. I don't think I across ever... the board officers are in better shape and better physical standing than enlisted people. Yeah, I don't anybody think that argues it's not being true. Bag officer in the Mar I mean, I knew there was shit bag officer, but I physically, I mean, I, you don't I can't, see officers running third class PFTs. Yeah. You don't see officers on remedial fat boy programs yeah. like that, yeah it just doesn't happen yeah um two more quick things um i just want to give a shout to my parents well i know my dad listens my mom doesn't really listen uh maybe sometimes she does they've just been helping me they've been helping me around the house and it's not like i can't do these things but well actually my mom's been doing things for me that i can't do she's been hanging wallpaper in a few rooms i can't do that and she doesn't like a professional job yeah. and it really helps. And then my dad was here yesterday. Um, power wash. I asked my dad to borrow his power wash. He's like, nah, I'll just come and do it. I was like, all right, I'm, all right. I can't do it during the day. I'm working. And he just did it all himself. He power washed my patio. So that's just really nice. nice. To have that's that help. Super Especially nice. in the boomer community, like not yeah. talking shit about anybody. Else. Those fuckers don't help with shit. <laughs> we, I feel like we got very lucky. Cons and I with our, my parents were just out here for over a week. Yeah. And my mom was sleeping in my toddler's bed and my dad was sleeping on a mini couch in the basement. And they don't complain. They don't didn't sleep complain. Over. They were exhausted. They, and my he's mom, a bad back guy too. He's a bad back guy. And I don't think they slept more than two hours because I can't lift the baby still. So my mm -hmm. mom, anytime she heard a peep, she, she, every day when I was at work, she organized the entire house, cleaned the entire house. My dad was like do, out at Home Depot buying like nuts and bolts for small things, fixing around the house and like, Oh my God, you're right. And it brings me comfort because I'm already look at my boys and I'm like, oh my God, they're going to fly the day, which is what you hope for them. But it's mm -hmm. nice to know that like, well, if they're as shitty as I am, they'll still need me when they're 40 or 35 <laughs> or whatever. However, Mom, we are. can you help me carry this? No, I can't. Yeah. I, my back is so bad that I actually have to live in an iron lung. That's true. I'm <laughs> heading that way. But still, so, it was, uh, yeah, yeah, shout to parents. And then lastly, so we have a colleague who is... I, I guess we could say legitimately running for Congress. Bill Billy, Cotter. Billy, Bill, oh, Bill Cotter, Billy mm -hmm. Football. Great. What do you got? What do you guys great think about name. 
I like that he's running against another Republican named Jim Toes, uh, okay. Jimmy Toes, of which Big Cat said, well, my goodness, that's athlete's foot, Jim Toes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's running and he, he put his his beliefs or whatever he did, his little belief blog where and he stands policies. On policies. And it's basically, he didn't say how he was going to do anything, but he said he was going to do things, yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is, to me, he's got the politician thing down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have people like Lo Lauren Boebert in Congress that doesn't even have a GED, I feel like that's what I'm saying. And we've said this countless times: how you know you grow up thinking people in Congress are the smartest people we got and really sharp and have the best interests of the country at heart. That's just not true. Yeah, yeah. Bill so, can do it. I believe he's going. I believe he's going for George Santos's district he in is. Long Island. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. If they voted so, for I mean, George Santos, he's got a chance. That would be an upgrade. Like, there's not very many seats that I think you could say Billy Football would be an upgrade. But I would like to yield to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Football. <laughs> yes, Mr. Football. <laughs> Billy, uh, I will say this: like he, it's like jokey and silly, or whatever. Say he got elected in some crazy world, he would. I don't really think it's care. that crazy. He would really care. He would like yeah. really try and really care. I don't know. Maybe I do want Billy football. If you for... had to put a percentage <laughs> on the likelihood he gets elected, what's your percentage? One. Uh, not high. No way. We saw, he's, so he's got to beat out like a ton of other. There's like 10 other Republicans running okay. to even get to the whatever. And it's like he needs the like ballot. the main winner last time got. I'm making this up, but like way over a hundred thousand votes i don't mm. know if there's that many stoolies in that section i don't know yeah, yeah. i don't think that there is any stool <laughs> that amount of stoolies. that's the problem he can't, yeah. he can't also like, i want to do it we need to have country. him i want to have him come on and i'm going to give him a civics test like yeah. to see what do you know how bills are passed when yeah. does it come out of committee how do you do lines of appropriation i want to ask yeah. billy all those he's questions he's a smart guy though. he is a billy smart guy, guy. He, is he is a smart is, guy how much does he have shades of soldiers and lower enlisted folks that we all knew who you would think you're or they they held themselves to be the smartest person in the platoon by oh, and large. Dude. And then you kind of like peel back a little bit and you're like, eh, that's not right. Billy would have fucking Might be me, thrived in the military. He would yeah, have he thrived. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he would have thrived. He is like the kind of person, but that you want in your, that you're like, oh, God, yes. fucking Billy. But but at the same time, you want him in your unit. He's, he's probably going to, if he does, he's probably going to have to get off steroids. He'd be imagine. king of the smoke pit. Yeah. No, I, I, know. I get that one. Do they drug test in Congress for steroids? No, but if he he was pretty angry when he was here doing the draft stuff, yelling at people and yeah. getting too fired up. But that mm. one dude, John Milwayne or whatever the fuck his name is from uh, Oklahoma that yeah. went to Afghanistan by himself. You remember yeah. what I'm talking about? Oh, God. That's yeah. a weird name. Yeah. I think that guy's on steroids. He, he challenged the leader of like the uh, plumbers union to a fight. <laughs> Ain't that and, America? Uh, Ain't that Bernie America? Sanders had to be like, Senator, Senator, you're a con you're a senator of the United States. We gotta stop this. <laughs> Just goofing, man. Uh, I hope he wins. There you go. John, we'll what the fuck is his name? John Wayne Mullen. No. John Wayne Mullen. Yeah, I know John who you're talking about. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. That's what it was. What about you, yeah. Kate? Anything? Ah. Uh, no, I could talk about my back some more, but I won't. I <laughs> I may never run again, I was told. Yeah. It's very oh. bad. It's so bad that, like, it's way worse than we thought. But that's okay. If you got more information this week? I got just about, it was like a real talk with my endocrinologist about the state of my bones. And it's like, it's terrible. Yeah, it's Can you really just start bad. drinking milk? <laughs> nope. Like, like we were told growing up? Like drink milk, half strong bones. No, but I got my first shot on Friday. I get it in the back of each arm, and then I get one every month for the next year. And hopefully, maybe I'm not as glass. But uh, essentially, like, I think an airbag would kill me. I think a sneeze would send me to the ER. I think I, it's nerve wracking. It's fucking yeah, nerve wracking. Yeah. But anyway, I'm over talking about it until next week. <laughs> I think you're allowed to talk about broken backs. Yeah, stuff. it's stressing yeah. me out. It's been a very. I. It's like life-changing enough that i cried a lot about it over the weekend but i'm okay now i think because of the butthole wrestler yeah i was gonna say take take him as inspiration i feel i felt around. inspired by him yesterday and i imagine what you the 
how shambles you would be if you got put in that thing. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my she god. She would actually die. You she guys might would. You know, the group chat would just be blown up with me talking to myself, which I do a lot, just paragraphs of what's going on. I'm like, you guys don't even have to respond. I'm spiraling. <laughs> but I this has inspired me to get healthy. I had a smoothie yesterday. There you Whoa. go. Was it green? It was. Oh wow. wow. Good. Job. Everyone knows those are the healthiest. Those Way to go. Healthy. Yeah, it's Avocado impossible to have spinach. something green. In. Like even green laffy taffy is good for you. But I'm gonna start walking every day, and because mm -hmm. um, that's the, the, all I can do right now. And I'm going to PT. I'm switching over to PT at the VA. So me and the Smart. old timers are gonna be there cruising. Smart. And then I am gonna like learn to eat healthy foods. Okay. I'm yeah. There's a lot of soup in the fridge. I'm gonna get some. <laughs> damn it! Bring some home. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> All right. Uh, the only thing I have, the more I learn about Vikings, how the fuck did they have adults? Like they, the how men they make it to adulthood. Yeah, yeah. Like the men, like you look at somebody wrong, and be like, "All right, well now I'm gonna put an axe through your face." Yeah. Oh, dude. I think dumb luck, probably for most of them. We talk about like how bad things are these days. It it's much better than it was. Yeah, true. Uh, life was way more brutal. Yeah, you can't go get it's an MRI brutal, if you're if you're hanging out with Ragnar Lothbrook. Certainly right. cannot. Can't do that. Indeed, indeed. But I'm reading they... this Viking series right now. It get, that shit gets me so fired up. I like to think that I would be a Viking. I'm way too big of a pussy for that. I don't know why I felt afraid that you're going to say that shit gets me so hard, <laughs> and I got nervous. Why does that make you nervous? Like, I haven't said that a million times on this show. I don't know. Like, something about Viking. You've been reading a lot, chaps. Yeah. I'm on book 20 this year. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm in a book funk right now. I have a good book and I just, I go through funks, man, where I just can't, like, uh, it's, it's not that I don't have time. Toddler, I have man. more time. Like, you know, my daughter doesn't stay up till midnight. She goes to sleep. Yeah. I, I have time and I just, I'm in a funk. Yeah. I wish I wasn't. I like it because I am excited to go i go back in two months to my neurologist yeah mm. to see what's going on with like my memory i think it has made a difference oh, i bet like the i just don't i don't lose my train of thought nearly as much i don't drop words um maybe i do and i just don't notice it so if i do on the podcast let me oh. know but i i'm excited about the change that it makes and i just like it like it's keeping me off my cell phone a lot where yes. I'm not like completely distracted mm -hmm. and where I'm not like doom scrolling a lot of times, like looking for military shit. So I've been able to kind of just take my a step back a little bit, which has been great. And I highly recommend that. I'm sure BetterHelp would too. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll be back here next week. We'll see you then. Sound the retreat.